Hi, my name is Shane. I use she and her pronouns, and this is the eighth session of a game of Fate of the Fairy Queen, uh, which is a reskin of Fate of Cthulhu from Evil Hat Games. This session and the series were organized as part of the Gauntlet gaming calendar. If you're not familiar, the Gauntlet is an online community that plays and talks about a whole lot of role-playing games, especially Indian story games. If you would like to find out more about the Gauntlet, check out uh, gauntlet-rpg.com. Uh, we do have our semi-regular Gauntlet Community Open Gaming Weekend coming up at the end of March, which is a great opportunity to try out a game with us for free uh, if you would like to see how you like playing with us. And we'd very much like to have new people come join. So that said, I'll ask the players to introduce themselves and their characters just uh, by name and pronoun and anything else that you want to tell us about yourselves. Uh, so Matt, can I get you to lead off this week? Yeah, my name is Matt. I use any pronouns. I am playing Bear, who was absent last week for the start of this uh, chapter of our story. So I am prepared to uh, make my entry into any kind of shenanigans that y'all could have possibly got up to last session. Um, had a bit of a, uh, I had a, re a brief reunion with my fairy love, um, which caused all sorts of complicated feelings. But I don't know, I'm thinking about that aspect and wondering how it might be rewritten or if it's still uh, in play the same way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just play that by ear. But oh. yeah, that's me. Um, did you take an advance at the end of uh, the last event? Do was it a minor milestone advance? What are they called? Sorry, I've got to check uh, what they're called in this game. It was the one, like the, the bigger one, I think. It was a big one. Uh, I, okay, and that was yeah. at the end of, okay. Um, the, I don't think I did. All right. Um, well, have a think about what you might want to uh, do by way of a milestone, or you're welcome to just leave it till after today and um, come by it. At the end of the right, I'll get I'll get brewing right now then. All righty. Um, let's see, Kyle. Uh, can you introduce yourself and Maeve. Uh, yes, I'm Kyle. He they. Uh, I'm playing Maeve, the uh, changeling who has left the Fae to fight with the the humans. Uh, she had a great time last session. <laughs> Everything went well for her. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Um, lol. Uh, happy birthday, by the way. Uh, thank you. Uh, so my name is Lol. Uh, pronouns he, him. And I'm running Fadim Bekara, she, her. She is, oh, we, we barely pulled it out last time. And she is walking around with a moderate consequence, which probably, I can't remember how that, how that gets healed up in this. Yeah. Um, so we'll, put, we'll need to, to to deal with that. And like, we just barely walked out of that. <laughs> just barely. Come on, it could have been much worse. Yeah. Yes, yes, it could have been much worse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we'll talk about how you recover from consequences in a minute. Thanks. Um, Jose. Hi, everybody. My name is Jose, and I use he, him pronouns. I'm playing Dr. C, uh, who also uses he, him pronouns. Um, uh, he is the psychiatrist um, who will maybe be helping with some consequence recovery um, during this process. <laughs> um, and um, uh, yeah, he got out, he kind of strolled out with um, a big book um, underneath his skirt. Um, uh, <laughs> um, so he, he, he uh, didn't quite take on as much fire as Fadim and Maeve did at that last bit. Um, uh um but he's happy to have um gotten his friends out the side door and into a cab which was really hard to get on fifth avenue at that hour by the way that's the real consequences <laughs> of that i think it was at least a difficulty four <laughs> all right um so before i'll do a little recap but first just remember um refresh your fate points um clear any stress from the last session that you still had because we've finished that scene um you do uh, yeah, sorry, Lol mentioned consequences. So if you have consequences, those don't refresh. We'll talk in a minute about how you recover from those. Um, and just remember, we're also using a set of safety tools. So we have lines and veils. We have the X card and the open door if you want to use any of those. 
So by way of recap, um, especially for your benefit, Matt, since you weren't here, um, in the last session, the characters did successfully steal the Grimm Brothers manuscript from the Met Gala. Um, they did also successfully uh, destroy or at least, you know, sever from this dimension some sort of awful, uh, monstrous, invisible tree thing that was giving birth to strange goblin delicacies. Um, before it could feed too many of the celebrities at the gala, um, although Dr. C did uh, taste a little bit of the goblin food. The, you know, apart from the sort of damage and the, the psychological and physical damage they took, the main sort of problem that they have rolled themselves out of, um, that's right, that's right, sorry, I, I left that out. They did gun down the Green Knight. Um, the main problem that they've sort of left to themselves is that uh, the FBI, or at least some people claiming to be the FBI, were also there apparently interested in the manuscript. And uh, where we finished up the last session was that uh, everyone arrived back at Bear's apartment and Bear showed them the news broadcast showing the, far, showing the security camera footage of Dr. C and Maeve uh, being you know, identified as wanted fugitives who are wanted in relation to the murder of a treasury official uh, who was part of their cover story, but who they did not in fact murder, uh, we know. Uh, but the general public does not know that. And I guess the other consequential event or potentially consequential event is that Maeve learned that Alexander Koshe, who holds somewhat of a grudge against the four of you, had hired her younger self as an assassin and sent young Maeve after present Maeve. But uh, present Maeve managed to talk, talk her down quite effectively. Um, so... <laughs> With a very convoluted story in some ways. <laughs> just, just to clarify, young Maeve does not believe that old Maeve is old Maeve, but in fact, another incarnation of the Maeve. And it's, it's wild. Also, um, uh, I totally broke all my promises to her. I, I promised her a share of the loot, and then I didn't. Um, I think that's a pretty, I think that pretty much reca recaps what happened. I mean, Matt, do you have any questions or does anyone else have any additions to make? So many questions, but uh, <laughs> I will hold on to uh, most of them, if not all of them. Um, we have the book. Um, Green Knight has been gunned down. Um, so is, is young Maeve sort of no longer a major problem for us or? Uh... What a great question. <laughs> okay, wonderful. So we're all on the same page then. Um, I think I'm all right. I think I might take um, a feat. I mean, maybe I should take a feat uh, with fairy glamour so I can make y'all look not like fugitives, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take um, the the drunkard stagger um because i'm a tavern fighter um and when i succeed on a, a defensive athletics roll i gain plus one on my next attack against the opponent who tried to hit me um oh. i think unless i can think of anything that really ties into the arc but otherwise i don't think i have any questions right. um the trees banished we have the book um the green knight is gunned down is, is like the whole Met Gala, uh, like, uh, do we have an exposure moment? Are they aware of a lot of things happening? Is this all over TV or like, what are they wanted for? Well, for the mur for murder, a murder that they did not commit, um, but, you know, I identified as having staged this robbery of the Met Gala. Um, so big, big news. Okay. Um, so that does all sound extremely dramatic, but just to like sort of step back at a meta level for a minute, when we did Stars and Wishes last week, um, a couple of people said that what they'd like is a sort of slower paced session with some more downtime. So that is kind of where I'm aiming for this session or what I'm looking to facilitate. Um, some of that plot stuff will sort of run in the background, will bubble up as it needs to. 
Um, but I'm also going to sit back a fair bit and let the four of you sort of direct the session and what kind of role playing scenes or vignettes you might like to frame. Um, so we are going to have a, a sort of more plotty opening um, to, to deal with those consequences and sort of see how things fall. And like, obviously, your, your characters may want to role play a fair bit of stress about the fact that the FBI are hunting you. But I just want to be clear as the GM, I'm not going to like push that in the session. Like, I don't want you to feel like you have to sort of scrabble for mechanical effectiveness or anything like that if what you want is some, uh, some more sort of chill role play time. You know, if you want to have your beach episode, you can have your beach episode and I will not drop a SWAT team on you unless you tell me that's what you want. Um, that said, uh, I will start with Bear. So just because Bear, you know, you weren't here last week, um, we can just hand wave that. I'm perfectly happy with that. But I wonder if there's something that you'd like to tell us about what you were doing. Um, I guess the obvious choices to me, and you, you know, it doesn't have to be one of these, uh, that either you were doing some sort of, you know, very important behind the scenes tech support for the Met Gala heist, um, or alternately that you, you know, needed some time out to yourself after your encounter with Thorn. Um, do either of those speak to you or is there something else that you'd like to say you were doing or? Um, I think, I don't think I'd be doing, uh very complicated tech support um so yeah i think the second makes sense like i might i might have had some duty that was very simple but just not like directly involved to get some breathing time i could have yeah i could have been like a contingency thing yeah i think that works just fine yeah that, that makes was sense. not very effective well, just contingency was not required because everything went, went fine. Um, okay, so um, we talked about recovery. So probably that's uh, like a, an actually mechanically important thing that we should get to. So Maeve has a couple of uh, mental consequences. Um, I think you, you know, sort of visibly rattled and panicked as you come back to the apartment insisting everything is fine. Um, and Fadim, as mentioned, has a, an ankle injury. So recovering from consequences is an overcome action. Uh, the difficulty is equal to the sort of value of the consequence. So I think it's two for a mild and four for a moderate. Um, difficulty is too higher if you're going to be treating yourself uh, than if somebody else is treating you. And it uses academics for physical consequences and empathy for mental consequences. So it would make sense to me that Dr. C might take a moment to try and uh, calm Maeve down. Um, so do the, do the two of you want to play that out a little? Sure. So if we get back to the get back to Greenwich or to Chelsea and to the um, uh, home turf there, where would Maeve go um, that Dr. C might come across her one on one? Uh, well, I always have a go bag, so you probably find me in some corner where I've stashed my gear, just like making sure I still have all my guns and ammo and stuff. <laughs> so you've got a secret um, stash somewhere in the residential hotel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I imagine um, uh, you, um, Maeve is um, going through her stash and Dr. C comes up from behind her, but very slowly um, and announces his presence um, and says, Maeve, I wanted to check on you to see how you're doing. Uh, even though you announced yourself, I think there was like a like reflexive grabbing for a gun for a second. <laughs> Dr. C puts his hands up. <laughs> I come in peace. I come in peace. <laughs> Please don't shoot. I'm uh I'm I'm doing great. Mission accomplished. We 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 got we went for the grimoire. We got the grimoire. I killed a hero out of folktale or a villain. I'm not. I've never been very sure on the, the Green Knight. Just <laughs> complete success. 
Uh, yeah, but that was all kind of intense. I don't know what went down with you and Fadim while I was uh, smuggling the book out, but um, you seem you seem rattled, my friend. Um, you uh, your pupils are dilated. Your hand, that hand that's holding the gun, is shaking, and. By the looks of that artery in your neck, I'd say your pulse rate is about 110 right now, which is a little high. <laughs> How are you feeling inside? Well, I had a lot of guns pointed at me, so <laughs> not great. But, you know, I, 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 I got this. I, I, look, we've dealt with three of the five events. We're in the home stretch. I can... I can white knuckle it through the end. Okay, we just got to get through the year and then it doesn't matter anymore. So Dr. C sits down on the, there's a step there. there the next to a stairwell, I guess. He steps down on the step and he indicates to Maeve, uh, I think you need to come sit down with me a little while, Maeve. I know you've been through a lot. I know you are war hardened and you all three of you have seen things that I can never imagine. But um Let's just have a little chat here. Fine. <laughs> and you can put down the gun. You don't need that right now. <laughs> Reluctantly, I'll put it down. <laughs> so I can imagine the, the camera pulling out at that point and, um, and the conversation continuing, but not having to uh, get into the details of Maeve's uh, anxiety. Yeah. Unless you want to play it out. <laughs> well, go ahead and roll the overcome action using empathy. Um, so if you beat two, that will clear the mild consequence. Uh, if you beat four, that will clear the moderate consequence. If you beat six, well, sorry, clear is probably the wrong word. It will start the recovery for the consequences. Start the recovery. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see. Where is that? Is there any help involved if I put out snacks? Um, I think because they've gone off by themselves, it'll just be oh. Dr. C right now. Damn. <laughs> All right. I thought I hit it. Oh, I didn't put any dice in. Oh, that'll help. <laughs> Oh, wait, it's fudge dice. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, so it's just a two. I got a bad roll. Um, are you interested in using any of your aspects here? Uh, let's see. Is... Yeah, um, I could just use my um, uh, my uh, um, high concept. Um, I am a talented psychiatrist, so I can use a fate point for that. Um, to re-roll or to bring it up by two? Oh, that's a good question. I think I'd re-roll, actually. You're, thank you for, for, for giving me that option. Because the negative two is a pretty bad roll. <laughs> negative three, yeah. I think re-rolling is worth it. Oh, oh. <laughs> the same exact thing. How could that be possible? Oh, <laughs> All <yeah>. right. <laughs> well, I guess it's just the minor consequence, Maeve. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> All right. um, so technically, the minor consequence lasts until the end of the scene where it starts to recover, but I, you might as well just clear it. Um, it's, it's not going to have right. any bearing on the scene. Um, All right. So Maeve remains, what is it, panicked? Yes. <laughs> so some of the like, I, I mean, how does that, like, what does that mean for your character? Some of the like surface anxiety is gone, but the deeper fears remain, or how do you see that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I, I think like the like less visible uh, fear, but there's still like, I'm carrying more guns than normal and then like investigating every noise sort of thing. All right. Um, and Fadim, do you ask uh, Bear for help like bandaging your ankle or what do you do? 
Are you muted? Yeah, I, I, yeah, because I, I can't do it because we're equally bad, but I'm going to be worse if I'm trying to do it on myself. Um, so, uh, what, what I'm going to need you to do is help me bear. I need this ankle wrapped up like, like. I've never been had my ankle ripped through like that. I'm used to like, you know, bruises and bones and things like that. This is different. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of ankles on the battlefield, but I haven't seen something like that too many times. Yeah, I, and I'd like to do it before I bleed out too much more. That'd be preferable. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Whew. It's been a while. You know, usually left it to the. To the the non the non fighter types, you know, on the, on the field. But uh, every once in a while, you're the only one. I, I am going to try to like talk bear up. You got this. I mean, you are on the battlefield. You know what you're doing. I, I'm I'm very much trying to to create create an aspect of like you have this. You've got this even as I'm getting more pale. Um, are you using empathy to create an advantage or what are you doing? Uh, I think it's probably empathy or rapport, probably rapport. Okay. Uh, sure. But really not good. But um, but it's a plus one, which is better than, than, than a zero. So let's yeah. see here. Um, I think a difficulty of two for this. All right, so that's yeah. a, a tie. So you'll create a boost. That, uh, plus one. Plus one for my report is a three. Oh, okay. All right. So you create an aspect. You've um, got this. Yeah, I like that there's some level of trust to Fadim, who's usually a one-woman show, kind of uh, um, uh, just, yeah, asking for help with something pretty matter-of-fact, pretty, you know, some battlefield stuff. Um, but I think it's a moment where the two of them can definitely connect and, uh, you know, have, have some shared history in that in that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it done countless times. I mean, used to watch my grandmother, uh, uh, you know, patch patch up my uh, patch up my scrapes and my boo boos. So uh, sh shouldn't be too much different than that. Here, let's see. Is this a crafts roll? Uh, academics. Academics. Ooh. Yeah. No. <laughs> That ain't me, but I'm going to. Uh, so uh, I have a I have a free. There's a free invoke if you need it, but just start by rolling it at plus yeah. zero. <laughs> I need it. All right. I mean, the free the the free invoke is only going to get you to zero, which will still be four short of a tie. I think. Sure. Because this is a moderate consequence, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's either it's either a, it's either a double invoke. So I refresh to four. It's either a double invoke or it's a uh, a reroll and pray situation. I am also good if if you don't make it. Like I I'm I'm good with that. I'm willing to play with that. So don't don't tap yourself out completely, Matt. Um. I'm going to go for a reroll and if we get to if we get to 0 I might consider the second and if we get to 2 then we're golden. So <laughs> let's that's the spirit. Let's give that a go. That's my spirit. That's where I'm at today. I feel talked up. I <laughs> uh, no, that's, hey. that's for the plus 2 I cheated. Uh, so it's minus 1. <laughs> <laughs> So that is neither of the things I was hoping for, but the spirit is there. Um, you don't feel a lot better and your ankle is worrisome, but Bear at least is in a good mood. Uh, you're muted, lol. Stop, stop the bleeding. Good. Um, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay back here on the lazy boy, put the recliner back and just kind of... Oh. Yeah, keep it lazy. Just keep it lazy. That's that's all we need to do. We well, you gotta lay low, anyways. I, uh, 
you know, and I kind of motion my head over to the television. I think I'm probably already unconscious at that point. Uh, uh, and I kind of grimace a little bit, <laughs> like I wince, like, oh, I don't think that's good. Um, you got to just pat. It's okay. I've just got a concussion. I'll just take a nap. Do you consider going to the hospital? This is not a gunshot wound. So at, at least at the moment, uh, tomorrow I'm probably going to have to. Yeah. I'm going to go get okay. some snacks. Could uh, if uh, Doctor C, I can imagine Doctor C walking into the room and seeing what there's done to Fadim, <laughs> saying, "Oh my God, there! What have you done?" <laughs> Just gauze everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we do it on the front lines. I know you weren't there, Doctor, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll have to take a look at that. Do you want to have a crack at it now? Since you know you've walked in on this scene of attempted dressing, and maybe you know a little bit more about medicine than uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I'll uh, I'll give it a shot. Um, so I have to wade through all the the gauze and see the if the blood, uh, <laughs> the blood, <laughs> as Vadim is relatively unconscious on the lazy boy. <laughs> all right, um, I guess it's I just roll with um, academics. Uh huh. All right, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Not that I'm rolling very well these days. I get a three. Well, if you use an aspect here, that's going to make that an outright success. Um, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. I guess I, I could. Just... Um, the only thing I can think of, a psychiatrist are technically medical doctors. <laughs> um, so um, uh, so that's the, the only thing I can imagine is, is doing the high concept again. Yeah, I think that uh, makes sense. Yeah. There is still the Fadim's aspect, although that was kind of encouraging me. So. Oh, Fadim's. Yeah, oh, but... I mean, that aspect still exists. Fadim can, you know, talk it up for you a little bit. E oh, either okay. of those works. I'll use the aspect that's on the on the table then. Hey, Doc, you got this. You got this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah you're... I am so sorry about your chair. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay. No, no, no speaking, no speaking. <laughs> All right, so that would be then a five. All right, well, that will mean that for a moderate consequence, um, you rewrite the name of the aspect um, of the consequence itself to reflect that it's now in recovery. Um, and at the start of the next session, that will clear. Nice. Cool. At least I got one good roll. <laughs> so I, I guess that means that the four of you are back together again. Um, you know that at least half of you are wanted fugitives. What do you do? And it's it's Doctor C and Maeve are are the, are the ones on the on the wanted sheet. Well, so so far, so far. <laughs> okay. We we need to get to like a hotel or a motel or something like that, and Bear, I check in and then. We need to not be here. Or can we trace you, Doctor? Sorry, um, we need to not be here. That's true. Um, they yeah. can probably trace me since Let's, I am from this time. In line. fact, we should probably be moving right now, even as we're talking, right? You've got your stuff, your kit, and all that stuff in the book. I got the book. Okay. Uh, you should not be moving, but um, we got to go. We got to go. I mean, Dr. C, you have a job here. You've got an apartment with all your belongings in it. Are you, like, what are you thinking? I think it's dawning on Dr. C that his life is um, unraveling. Um, uh, and um, what seemed like um, an adventure, a jaunt, and now he realizes the sacrifice um, and I think he is a little shaken um, uh, as he as they close the door on his apartment, and he thinks that you know he he may never see it again, um, or uh, never have that um, uh, 
life again. Yeah. So maybe he pauses for a moment as uh, the door closes on his apartment and he stares at the door. Um, and Maeve, I mean, you're you're not native to this timeline. You don't have the kind of ties that Dr. C has, but you, you know, your face is probably pretty familiar to a lot of people around town. You've been like, what did you say? Running, like hustling at pool to make money. You've been mixing with construction workers and gangsters and things like that to dig up leads. Um, how do you feel about this new way of being on the run? Um, I mean, she has made some connections here, but I mean, I've been on the run pretty much nonstop since the hounds got my scent. This is this is a Tuesday. I've, you know, I've got my go bag. I'm leading the way. Like, why is everyone else slow? What's up? Um, I mean, Lowell makes a good point in the chat. Are you concerned about your younger self being caught up in the fallout? Uh, I'm a little worried about her catching me or something <laughs> or coming, getting revenge. Other than that, not, not really. All right. Um, so, Dr. C, as you pull the door shut to your apartment for what might be the last time, you hear um, the buzzer inside your apartment go off, the one that rings when someone is on the street outside uh, asking to be let in. What do you do? Um, I think um, there's a window at the end of the hall um, that looks out onto 14th and um, uh, he, can, he knows he can poke his head out there and see who's down on the on the first floor ringing the buzzer mm -hmm. without having to like respond to them. <laughs> Convenient. <laughs> so he runs over, uh, opens the window, and pokes his head out, looks down. Uh, so you see Angela Reyes, your date from the Met Gala, and oh, she gosh. looks mad. <laughs> Shit. Um. Pulls his head quickly back in. We have to go out the back way. <laughs> um, well, if you Who's don't answer. Sorry, what'd you say, Maeve? Who's out there? It's my friend, Dr. Reyes. Um, the one I went to the, 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 the gala went with. Uh, we can't let her see you. I know. So well, we have to go out the back way. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. She'll ambush us if we go out the front. Um, well, she'll call your phone then. <laughs> uh... Will okay, you answer? Doctor, pick it up. Dr. C, will pick it up. Here, let me see if I can get her off the trail. <laughs> All right. So the, the oh, rest of you are, it. yeah. You're all heading out the back door. You're getting away. Says, Dr. C's on his phone, running behind them. <laughs> um, so she, as soon as you answer the phone, she just says, Alonso, I know you're in there. <laughs> you open no, this no. door. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm at work. <laughs> I'm at work today. Um, what do you, what do you, what, what do you need, Alicia? <laughs> uh, what, what, what do I need? A crazy day. <laughs> A crazy day. I thought you really liked me, but now I learn that you only wanted to spend time with me so you could, what, murder FBI agents? So you could rob them at Carla? Do you think I'm someone that you can treat like that? This was all a big misunderstanding, Alicia. You know I'm not a murderer. You've known me for years. <laughs> I can't, I wouldn't harm a, a flea uh, or a fly or any small little creature. Um, uh, and what would I be stealing things from the, the gallery for? That's, well, that's crazy what I talk. want you to tell me. It's crazy talk. I don't know how I'm going to have to go down to the station now and clear my name. Well, why don't you come out your front door and meet me? And we I can told go down you, I'm at yeah. work. I am at work. I'm, I'm, I'm at Bellevue. I'm not here. All right. Will you tell I mean, me? Well, there. if you're going to go, <laughs> if you're going to talk to the police anyway, then I guess I'll just call them and tell them everything that I know. Well, everything you know is that I am an upstanding citizen. Well, I might have said that yesterday, but I will <laughs> not say it today, <laughs> Dr. Sofuentes. <laughs> 
I don't know what to tell you, Alicia, you have to act in in good conscience um, and tell them if you think I am a murderer and um, a thief, um, uh, you can tell them that. Um, I'm sure they already know where I live, um, so that won't be news to them. Um, Why? Well, can I come meet you at work? I really wanted you to look me in the eye and tell me this. Um, <laughs> I think I need to go down to the station now. Maybe you could meet me there if you'd like. <laughs> Which station? <laughs> the, the nearest one to Bellevue? The nearest one to Bellevue, yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll be there in, what, 20 minutes? All right, I will do my best to get there. All right. Click. <laughs> Ooh. Keep walking, everybody. She's pretty intense. Should we, we uh, uh, kill her? I, <laughs> no, no. Can I ask a question, Dr. Fuentes, as we're walking down this alley and getting around? Yes. Is that typical for her or was that unusual like is there somebody pushing her or did that feel like that's her natural reaction to what goes on well can i make a roll for that <laughs> I, I, yeah you can make a roll or i'm also happy for you to just tell us what the answer is if you want to oh, tell us what the answer is okay yeah. yeah 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 she seemed more hysterical than usual. Um, she's usually quite put together. Um, you know, she's 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 an influencer and a she you know, she knows how to how to how to how to put on a good face. But she was losing it a little bit. Um, uh, so I wonder if someone is leaning on her. Um, uh, more the reason to keep our eyes open because if they are leaning on her and she's downstairs then whoever's doing it might be nearby. Yeah, let's get out of here. Uh, I, I hope it's that and not the tasty treats that she ate or something like that. She was eating those tasty treats quite a bit. Oh yes. my God. She thought, she thought they were delicious. Mm. I, couldn't, I couldn't dissuade her. Mm. Heard you go, took a nibble yourself. I did, but she ate. You should have seen her taking down those cannabis bear. <laughs> she was into it. So this is I don't know. I might be, if I be, uh, start behaving um, strangely, you'll have to tie me up and uh, put me over your shoulder, bear. Shame. <laughs> uh, so let's let's make our way to to motel to regroup or a uh, hotel, I suppose. Uh, mo motel in New York City. Um, yeah, why doesn't someone roll to create an advantage where we'll call the advantage, you know, secure home base or something like that? Um, I guess using resources, which maybe none of you have. How about contacts, maybe? Yeah. Somebody have good contacts? I have one. one. A, a non-zero sum contact. <laughs> Um, so I think it's difficulty four to create an advantage here. Like you, you will find a, a hotel where you can hang out, but the, the difficulty four is to actually get a free info on an aspect for it. Okay. Is that from making the role to find it or, um, so we're gonna, an aspect in general? Yeah. So that you're going to find a hotel where you can regroup, where you'll have some space, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, the role is to see whether you get a free invoke on an aspect to do with it being a safe location. Okay. Otherwise it might not be safe. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be safe enough, but you're not necessarily going to get the free invoke uh, mm -hmm. th that you can use for something else. I will help with the contact role unless we, uh, unless resources is the only way. Uh, no contacts is okay. You're both going to, Ask on Facebook for recommendations. <laughs> Stealth wouldn't wouldn't apply. Um, I don't really see that. If, if you okay. want to tell me how stealth works here, but well, I was just thinking um, uh, that we're trying to lay. The whole thing is to lay low and be undetected. Um, but I can do contacts. I don't know how we do it. Um, uh, um, 
but let, why don't I just go ahead and roll? It'll be, I've got a one and bear helps me um, with a one. So that's a two. So we'll see what happens. I think bear knows where the squatters and the unsavory folks go to play low. There. Yeah. Got stuff going on. He's, he went to a, a few bars last time we were here. Mm -hmm. It's All a right. zero. <laughs> so you find somewhere that you can stay, but you know, it, it's not like the most defensible location. It's not going to be ideal if somebody does come for you, but it's, you know, it gives you a, a reprieve, a, a sort of breathing room to, to figure out what you're going to do next. Um, I mean, I feel that I must say, Dr. C, that in 20 minutes when you don't turn up at the police station, there's a follow-up call. <laughs> I'm turning my phone off. Um, yeah. uh, um, and uh, actually, I probably, since my phone is registered to me, I'll probably just uh, destroy my phone at that point. And Dr. C, when he does that, he just kind of, so he just stomps on it. And, um, and then he looks down at it in the same way he looked at the door. Um, to his apartment, um, uh, this sense of loss, um, like everything's unraveling. And um, so he just stares a moment too long at that. I think uh, Bear might put a hand on your shoulder and say, there's no going back now. You're with us. I'm losing everything. I guess you all are all I've got now. You're not losing everything. That's what would happen if we weren't here. Good point. Good point. You're a sensible guy, Bear. Thanks for having me, having my back. Should we read that book? <laughs> yeah, we should see what's in it, why they wanted to take it, what's going on. After all the trouble to get it, man. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, there's a lot to take in in the manuscript. Um, um, the Grimm brothers, you know, included variations on a lot of classic fairy tales, that sort of, you know, like kind of obvious stuff. Um, there are some margin notes that are of mainly academic interest. But the real uh, find for you is that when the Grimm brothers compiled this, uh, probably in the, what, the 1700s, I think the Grimm brothers were, were doing their work, They've bound in some pages from what looks to be a much older, like illuminated manuscript that's been produced some, somewhere in the more distant past. And the stories that are told in that illuminated manuscript have, you know, some familiar fairy tale elements, but aren't at all a classic fairy tale. Um, they're about a man from the future who traveled back in time to defeat an evil queen. And struck a blow against this queen so powerful that she was banished from the world for a thousand years but for the rest of his his days was haunted by the regret that he hadn't truly defeated her and she would return one day and so he spent many years on this quest to find a way to permanently defeat her and arrived at no specific conclusions but had some ideas some thoughts some strategies some maps uh, and clues about how the this queen might finally be defeated. Now, I, I sort of put this to you. Um, one way we can deal with this is that I can just tell you what uh, the theories are about how the queen can be defeated. Uh, I'm very happy to do that if you want the, the more like traditional RPG experience where the GM tells you how things are. Um, but I'm also happy just to leave it open-ended, um, not even necessarily for today, but to just say, maybe create an aspect that you have information about the queen's weaknesses. And when we get to the rise of the queen, you can tell me whatever like fantastical fairy tale ideas you have about uh, what you've learned about how to defeat her. Um, what do people prefer? I am not a clever woman. <laughs> so I will, I will defer to those who have skills like lore and <laughs> academics if you defer to people who have skills like academics it's going to be a short list <laughs> and lore some other people lore have lore. lore we get by on the lore i kind of like the idea of well can we get have our cake and eat it too can you give us something and then we could make up something uh, uh, too 
Yeah, I, that does work, I guess. Or okay. give us a seed and we could play with it. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that. Okay. So, yeah, I think, all right. So some, some suggestions, but nothing too definitive. So I think that there were two, well, there are at least two ideas that the, the protagonist had uh, about how the queen, like what, what weapons might be effective against this queen. Uh, one of them uh, was the grail. And there is some suggestion that when the veil between worlds was torn when this queen returned, that the Fisher King might return as well and that the grail might be uh, accessible to humans for the first time in, in generations. The other is that if someone harmed by this queen could truly find it in their heart to forgive her, that that might be a devastating blow that would uh, ruin her powers and uh, lay her low. Um, I like those. But certainly also open for you to uh, figure out uh, other other suggestions or ideas that are hidden in the text. Well, we, I'm trying to uh, recap in my head when, when we re when we received the gift of uh, Alonso Cifuentes from another time, um, he was dead in, in a coffin, right? Well, he was in a long sleep in a coffin and then he quickly passed away when he was woken. Right. But we received some words from him, is that right? Um, as I recall, he just warned Dr. C that time was gonna go past very quickly and not to, not to dawdle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dr. C, I, I, oh, my Dr. C, the young Dr. C asked the older Dr. C whether Bear was his true love because he was less concerned with plot than more with uh, romance <laughs> at that moment. <laughs> I mean, they could be one and the same. They could be one and the same. It's true. It's true. Um, and also, it, it occurs to me that I wonder if there was any of the lore from, what was her name? I can't remember her name. Uh, oh, author, uh, Celeste. Celeste, Celeste um, uh, who had the lore from her family about how Dr. C did it in the first place, the, at least the thousand year respite. <laughs> I, I have those books on Kindle. So <laughs> I'm going to, I will uh, keyword search for Fisher and Grail. That's what I'm doing. That's an investigation if I ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, why, why don't you tell me, what do you discover in those books? I would like the... See here. I would like maybe the idea that 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 in the books the, that at least one of the quests that these modern people go on because it's a it's a story of modern people fighting the the fairy queen that I do think that they like go on a quest to find the grail and of course the grail is something completely different like it's it's hidden as a mundane thing and uh in the cup yeah like like that there's there's something some hint of something maybe we've seen in the news or or something that 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 connects to it uh, that that's that's my baseline suggestion i uh, i i'll pull the table on on that Is is there something that ha happens to people if they drink from the Grail? Um, maybe maybe um, I just love the idea of it being like a sports trophy, and then these athletes like will drink from the cup after their victory, and then something happens to them or something like that. Um, oh yeah, what could the Grail be? I think there's lots of fun interpretations there. I think I have a I have a, I have an idea. I think it ought to be like 
a a culturally significant like object uh and i think if i that this is something i from something i read before uh the idea that maybe there's a museum exhibit of like historical americana and like they have like one of the glass bottles from the very first like coca-cola uh, bottling in Atlanta, like that's it, it's it's like the only specimen they have left of this magic elixir of Coca Cola, the American drink uh, that is that is there, and you know uh, that that's that's on display right now. That's my thought. I like it. I, like it too. <laughs> I don't know much about this myth in particular. It, it does mean we have to steal from another museum if we want to go after that, though. So more stealing, they're already, they're on to us about that. <laughs> we could pull um, a proper heist this time, though. Like, wires and everything. I mean that that could also be something that plays out when we get to the rise of the yeah the fairy queen event. We don't have to to finally decide this stuff now. Mm -hmm. Um, but we can peek on the lookout for a mundane object that um, uh, might be the grail um, mm -hmm. uh, um, in some shape or form. But yeah. there'll be guardians, there'll be all sorts of things if it's the grail. <laughs> um, Dr. C, you feel suddenly a terrible cramping in your stomach. Um, why don't you roll to defend using will for me? Oh, so I'm going to roll the, the attack. Oh, there's no dice in my roll. <laughs> Glad that I got to experience Ooh. that as well. All right. Um, so that is three shifts of, oh, is it, is it mental or physical stress? Um, I, I guess I defer to you. You feel the goblin food inside you. Something is happening. Um, does it feel like physical stress or mental stress? Sorry. Um, I think it feels like um, really an intense wave of nausea and, um, and some kind of... Uh, so, but there's like a panic in the nausea. Um, uh, um, Dr. C does not like to throw up at all. And so he's got a, a kind of phobia of that. And um, so I th I'm thinking more mental. Um, um, oh, so sorry, so but stress. Yeah. Um, so additionally, you'll take a point of enchantment. Ouch. Um, and, oh, which will mean a ripple for the queen. Oh. Uh, I mean, if you want, you can try and use aspects to reduce that to a to not be a hit. I would need to do two, right? Yeah. Um, no, I don't think I have anything that could really uh, take the edge off. All right, having well, the bad well. canopy. <laughs> So, I mean, the other three of you, I have good news and bad news for. The good news is that you are no longer worried about Dr. C being recognized from the security camera footage. The bad news is that's because he has the head of a donkey. Um, and I think that that's where we'll take our first break and we'll come back and see uh, what becomes of that. So just about 10 minutes. Is that good for everyone? Sounds good.
you know, I was just about to say that, you know, to emphasize that if to your head turning into a donkey's was like not fun for you, that you were welcome to X card it. But I sense from your background that this won't be a problem. That's fine. <laughs> um, so maybe the fairy queen will fall in love with me now. <laughs> So the three of you do see Dr. C sort of, you know, clutch his stomach and then uh, as he stands, uh, you see that he has the head of a donkey. What do you do? See, this is why you don't eat food at fay parties. Oh, John. Um, what, what do you mean? <laughs> My belly's better now. It was just a, a, a mild cramp. I, I, I'm better. Just a little dazed. Uh. Dr. C, can I ask you to say something? Yes. Hello. Hello. Would you please say, oh, whoa, whoa is me. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, we should probably, um, do you think that you're the only one whose head has turned into a donkey's head, Dr. C? Donkey said, what, what do you mean? Maybe you should go to the bathroom. <laughs> Dr. Z runs to the bathroom. <laughs> Look down your nose early, I mean. Oh! Screams. <laughs> Screams come from the bathroom. <laughs> hey, uh. He runs back in. <laughs> oh, this is not good. How do we make this go away? Oh, here is the important question. Yeah, yeah, no, no. The important question, yes, is how do we make that go away? The important question is, are you the only one that this has happened to? Or across Manhattan right now, are there a host of influencers and celebrities who have just had their heads turn into donkey heads? Good question. I, I destroyed my phone. I don't have internet access. Well, well, well the, let's turn on the television and see if there's anything on the news about this. So if you turn on the television, I think that the, the first thing that you'll get is uh, Dr. C's nosy downstairs neighbor talking about how he always seemed like such a nice young man. Um, <laughs> no, no reports of strange transformations. Well, at least she's saying good things about me. I'm surprised. <laughs> she never liked my friends. We're going to have to do something uh, about this before long. I need to discuss. Does, does anyone remember the play? Is there, is there a time limit in the play for how long it lasts? I would Google how does how does Bottom's head turn back? <laughs> um, full oh, disclosure: God. I have never read or seen Midsummer Night's Dream, so uh -huh. I will oh, not be <laughs> I will not be answering that question. Titania will fall in love with me now if she sees me. <laughs> okay. Well, it might be a prank, or it might be a very serious curse. Ouch. It's one or the other. Um, I think I go, I pull out a, a lore book and I start flipping through. Um, cures for donkey headedness. <laughs> Quick cures. <laughs> I mean, the quickest cure is surely in the book you got from Baba Yaga, if you want to try and find some magic there. Um, <laughs> otherwise, yeah, I guess you can make a law roll to, to identify a way to reverse this. Uh, I mean, it's not exactly urgent, is it? <laughs> Well, not urgent for you, perhaps. <laughs> I can't be seen in public like this. It would have draw too much attention. Well, you can't be seen in public at all, can you? That's true. 
<laughs> we should get you. Well, first, I think we need to establish like how foldable are those ears? I don't know. They seem very erect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I feel very sad, no, they do they go back if I feel sad? <laughs> <laughs> Let I'm going to go and get a hoodie. Extra, extra, extra large. I'll be back and we'll see how difficult it is to to conceal this in in a hoodie. That sounds like a reasonable plan. I, I will consult the lore books <laughs> with, with Bear, see if there's a more permanent solution than just covering them. Um, I mean, this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say some silly things. What were you going to say, Shane? No, please say some silly things. <laughs> I mean, this could be a boon, you know? Um, you, you resemble uh, many of the strange kind I used to see out deep in the woods performing strange carnal rituals late into the night. <laughs> you could, uh, you could, you, you could be a, a double agent for us. Ah, no one would know. They would think I'm a, a fairy. I can infiltrate, like Maeve. <laughs> Precisely. Um, that sounds like fun. <laughs> no one will recognize me. Well, since my life is over, I might as well look different. Oh, Am I at least a, 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 a handsome donkey? <laughs> yes. Or horrid <horror>, donkey. <laughs> Say something nice. <laughs> I mean, the image you've chosen for yourself is, is no, I just need a different terrifying. image, I think. Let me, let, me, let me find a different one. No, I think that one could stay. <laughs> I will find a more handsome donkey for poor Dr. C's sake. Um, so uh, looking at our, our timeline track, um, are we aware of um, the, the person or the foe that are involved in uh, the Midsummer's Night Dream. Ah, I don't think that you are. Okay. So... Um, I mean, I think at this point you could safely say that your foe is the FBI and perhaps the entire police of police force and intelligence community of New York. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because presumably there might be more powerful beings after the manuscript. Is that right? Um, is this something that was like here because it was coveted? Why exactly was it here? Do we know? So the Met Gala includes an exhibition on a theme and this year's theme was around fairy stuff and this being a valuable manuscript was included there. Um, and you think that the FBI agents, and I guess, you know, there, there may also be some doubt as to whether they were really FBI agents or who they were, but they have some sort of uh, law enforcement connection. Um, we're, we're trying to steal the manuscripts. They were there for it at the same time that, that Maeve and Dr. C were. And they, they, they like when, when push came to shove, they attacked us mm -hmm. rather than the other way around. So there was something going on there. May I ask this, this manuscript, was it part of the Metropolitan's collection or was it donated for the exhibition by someone? Um. Yeah, I think a little Googling will answer that for you. You don't need to roll or anything. It was on special loan from the Vatican Library. Is there a representative from the Vatican who is present? Were there more things supplied by the Vatican? Uh, just, the, just the manuscript. Certainly there are, are they called the Swiss Guard? What are the Vatican Border Patrol called? Yeah, the Swiss Guard. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably not in their traditional uniform, but there are some Swiss Guard uh, in New York to accompany the, the manuscript. Uh, 
they've had you know a, f a fluffy lifestyle profile in one of the newspapers that you can find i want to see if i can track down like hotel like 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 i want to investigate if i were going to try to get a message to them how would I do it? That's what I want to investigate. And uh, so just to be clear, you mean directly to them rather than like going through the police or something like that? Exactly. Because I would like, I, I, I think the enemy of our enemies potentially are a friend in this case. So this is what I'm working towards. Interesting. Um, well, yeah, I think you can make a, an investigate role. Um, I think maybe a difficulty of four to get a message directly to the Swiss guards. Okay. Uh, so that is a three, but I am going to spend a fate point and invoke that enemy of my enemy. All right. Oh, and how do you get a message to them? Uh, I think it is that I find out what hotel they're at and I, I, you know, go to a, a, a cyber cafe and I write something up and I print it out. And then I, I put it in a formal looking envelope and I go to the hotel and I pay somebody uh, uh, some money to deliver this to the people in room 327. And is the message like a, a phone number for them to ring? Is it a, a letter? A location for a meeting what it is is it says i was present at the met gala uh um uh and i saw what occurred with the uh the issue you know essentially suggesting that i had snuck off you know to 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 like shake off my drunk uh, and I saw these FBI agents speaking with uh, the, the Dr. C and this other woman who I don't know. And uh, the, they, the FBI agents then attacked them. Uh, and there was clearly something strange going on. And it, I, it was chaos. Um, but it, it seemed like the FBI agents had cleared the area and they seemed to be like going to try to steal the book and setting these people up for this. Uh, I, I, I don't know who to, to talk to. I don't know who to tell. Uh, uh, this, this is very strange. And I will give like a, a burner email address just, just in case, but I want to get them like suspicious. Okay, uh, I like and it. I am, I am going to. Since we already had the resistance filled, so so clear the track it. and start filling it again. Okay. Nice. Um. That's that's my gambit. I'll, uh, I'll, you, you all should should do your your thing. So, Maeve, do you have any plans or strategies that you want to put in place? Or, I mean, you're still panicked. Does that like drive you to action or to rest? Or what do you do? Uh, mostly just laying low, I guess. Yeah, just just trying to hide until the heat blows over. Or we can go on to the next job. Dr. C, do you have any plans apart from trying to figure out a way to get your regular head back? <laughs> um, what is our goal now, folks? Um, I'm, I'm confused. We have the book. Um, we've disrupted the gala. Um, I have a donkey's head. <laughs> but I'm not sure what our next step is. Um, anyone have a clue? 
Well, we know that there's opposition from the conspiracy. Uh, conspiracy, yes. Um, <clears throat> so it'd be good to, I mean, Vidim has taken a good step there. Um, we also have some like mythic threads of how to approach the final challenge. Um, and I think it's kind of, we can kind of um, explore our own solutions a little bit too. So, um, so we and I, I mean, I think that as Dr. C asks this question, the camera slowly pans over to where Baba Yaga's horns are sitting. And the, the recollection that these can get you out of a physical space, but they can also get you out of a situation like being hunted by the FBI, uh, if you're willing to uh, blow them hard enough. <laughs> I, I don't want to resort to the, the horns just yet. I mean, it, 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 maybe we wait till they're banging on the door before we, we blow. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I mean, a couple of you mentioned that you were going to turn to the law books to try and figure out what might help with Dr. C's head. Um, why, who, does somebody want to make an overcome role using law um, to see what you can find and presumably um, get some help from some of the others? Yeah, I just love the idea of Dr. C with his donkey head, you know, perusing <laughs> books, <laughs> turning pages very quickly. <laughs> And I'd love some help from, I guess, Bear is the other uh, lore, lore meister. <laughs> I'd like to help. And there's some other stuff I'd like to look in some of the back pages of the, the tomes, too, as kind of a side, a, another contingency. All right, well, let's start with a, a roll on the, on the head before we get to the back pages. Um, so I think get rid of a head. <laughs> uh, overcome using lore maybe difficulty of four. Okay. Um, I like to think we've got like a bright white fluorescent lamp over like a stain table in the hotel room and we're just like set up office, paper sprawled everywhere, um, heads together. Well, heads <laughs> a little apart. With the ears popping up out of the, <laughs> to the huddle. <laughs> um... Give you a pat on your forehead. <laughs> All right, the fudge dice have not been kind to me today, but we'll see what happens. Again, I keep getting negative twos. <laughs> um, but, do you want to spend a fate point and make that a tie? Let's see. Um, sure. Um, I'll say Sleeping Beauty because it's about getting my beauty back because I, I don't think I'm a beautiful donkey. <laughs> um, got me down to two fate points. Um, that's a tie, right? That will be a tie. Oh, which... um, but if, um, uh, if Shinado is helping me. Ah, yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, so you succeed. So. Well, uh, I think that a few things come together here. So there's not really a direct answer to, you know, how can I turn my head back when I it becomes a goblin after eating donkey food at a Midsummer Night's Dream themed, <laughs> you know, gala. But there are stories about uh, transformations that involve, you know, resembling a donkey. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is about uh, uh, a princess who... Uh, dresses, disguises herself as a donkey and her true identity is only revealed when she places on her finger the ring that her own ring that she'd sent to the prince uh, that the prince was using that the prince had like tried on every every woman in the in the kingdom to try and find the match and that probably seems irrelevant at first uh, until you are surprised by the coincidence that on the television that's playing in the background, the FBI are now saying that they found the ring 
belonging to one of the perpetrators of the Met Gala heist. And that as soon as they find the person that this ring fits, um, they will have, and they don't say, you know, it is notable they don't say they'll arrest that person. They don't say they will have the culprit. They say that they're going to have a very interesting conversation with that person. <laughs> Um, but, but for, I mean, you, you probably want to talk about that, but Matt, you mentioned that you also wanted to, uh, try and find some information. Yeah. I, I keep thinking about, um, uh, ancient Alonso's words, uh, um, and even though they were relatively simple in instruction in, uh, remember that the time comes quickly, don't dawdle too much. There's something about, um, like the nature of time and the fact that we've come from another timeline. And I'm curious if I can find anything here about um, a ritual to make small jumps or to, to, um, to, uh, it would be obviously be probably out of our control to like travel 10 years in the future or something. But I'm, I keep, I keep thinking about this idea of, of, of rushing and of speed and of time in a way to kind of get the upper hand on her. So um, I'm just wondering if there's anything in there. Um, yeah, I mean, we established that you can make uh, law checks to try and find magical rituals in Baba Yaga's spell book. I think that's probably more what you'd be looking for for this. You know, the, the law books won't, won't include powerful magical rituals along those lines. Um, but yeah, you are welcome to make a difficulty for law check to find a ritual for the travel through time in Baba Yaga's spell book. Uh, well, it's do I mark enchantment if I use the spell? Um, if you if you use magic, then you will mark enchantment. Then that's true, regardless of the source. The yeah, that's right. Okay. All right. I'll make a difficulty for a low roll. Could I have help from Dr. C? Where's... I will. Whoa. Ooh. You're rolling a lot better than I am, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> My All first right. two were not nice, but that's max. <laughs> okay, so that means that you're going to get a boost as well. So feel free to, to name the aspect that you get the boost for. Um, maybe the record is skipping um, or something. Something I'm, I'm inspired by Dr. C's like twists of fate um, uh, aspect. Um, or maybe there's start to be these little minute, tiny little disruptions in time and these tiny little uh, rifts opening up, maybe as the, the impending date gets closer to destabilization. And so maybe that's something one of us could invoke at some point. Um, like and it seems like, or something? Yeah, like there's a ritual here. <laughs> no, very nice. There's a ritual here, but there's also uh, like the principle of it is something that we can at some point uh, use, but it is dangerous. Oh, um, so I, I will have to write up the ritual itself. Um, it doesn't seem like you're planning on using it during today's session. Is that fair to say? That's right. right. So I'll, I'll draft something between sessions um, and we can talk about it next time. Um, cool. So, I mean, for Dame, while they're looking through the books, that doesn't really seem like your sort of thing. You've brought back a hoodie, which I mean, I guess to an extent uh, conceals the donkey head, but not that effectively. Um, but you know, I mean, you generally are sort of a bit more conscious of Maeve's like jumpiness and things like that. And I think that you sense that there's still some trouble there. Uh, do you, how do you, like, do you interact with Maeve? Do you try and help? Do you try and avoid her? Like, what's, how do you play that? Interesting. Let me think here.
because the problem is that I don't know what to say to Maeve. Like, I really don't. Like, I kind of don't get Maeve. And also, I'm not the person to talk somebody down from these kinds of things. But I will try and converse. I was a leader before. Don't want to be a leader. I, but I will try and talk to Maeve and, and say, Maeve, are you, are you, are you okay? Because you don't seem okay. It's just finally sinking in that we're all probably going to die. I mean, I, I knew from the beginning we were all probably dead and this was a suicide mission, but it's, it's just sinking in. Why do you think we're going to die? We're planning to be at ground zero when the queen rises. We're planning on stopping the queen. When she rises, we're not planning on getting evaporated or blown apart in that. The only reason she won before is that we weren't here. I'll believe that when we stop her. I think we need to talk to your younger self. She'll betray us. I would have betrayed us then, and then I, I, I was her then. The problem is that she's in the same boat as we are now. Her face is also up on those wanted posters. And it's not like Koshi is going to help her. Let me ask you this. Could you have had a better life? Yes. Then you owe it to literally yourself to try and make a change just what is what's she supposed to do for us like how does she help the mission she doesn't this is helping you the mission I, is more important is it yes then get your shit together <laughs> It's either about you or it's about the mission. You got two choices. If you want it to be about you, I'll help you. But if it's about the mission, like you say it is, and like you've said it is all the way along, then you need to get your shit together. Okay, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. I, I would like to try. Uh, I think this is... I have the same in Provoke and Rapport, and I think this is somewhere between the two. Does that seem fair? Uh, sure. Because um, you still got a, a minor or a moderate, Maeve? Moderate. moderate. Okay. I'm going to go for it. Wow, Bear. Yes. <laughs> the eight, the, the dice roll. Way, way to use up all of our luck. <laughs> <laughs> Digging in the back of the book. Yeah. Okay, so we're at a one. Two aspects will bring you up to a success there. Okay. So one of those aspects is Fallen Shield Maiden of the Fae. That's my personal aspect. So I'll take that to a three. And then The other one I think is that I'm playing into the, the sort of the negativity that like the, the fidelity that like, we're going to do this of 
no more happily ever after. Like, yes, if that's what you believe, you believe nice. it, then you've got to lean into this. You've got to. Amazing. All right. Well, that's two um, fate points I'm spending. So, Kyle, you can rewrite the the aspect on the moderate mm -hmm. consequence to reflect the fact that you're feeling better, but it's going to stick around as a moderate consequence until uh, the end of next session. Uh, okay. And Does that work for you, Kyle? I just want. I oh yeah, yeah. Push that on you, Kyle. I just want to make sure I'm there. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. So, how does like what does it feel like or look like for Maeve to hear that? Uh, just sort of like, like you know, taking that in, deep breath, and just like mentally preparing herself. Like, okay, suicide mission. My feelings don't matter. Let's do this. Excellent. And I mean. For Deem, I'm curious, like, I mean, you pretty much just said that if it's possible to give your, your younger self a better life, then you have an obligation to do it. Does that, like, does that reflect on you at all? Uh, as someone whose younger self is probably not having the greatest time right now? It does, because I didn't take that opportunity when we were in Europe. I did not. And there's no, I have no chance to do that. And in some ways, like, I'm glad that Maeve is focused, but in other ways, I'm like, I wish, I wish that she would, I, she can't believe she, yeah, I, I think that's, that's painful. Yeah. Uh, and Dr. C and Bear, I mean, you have some time to talk as you work through these spell books and law books and things like that. What does that conversation look like? I think you haven't really had a chance to talk since you met a, your future self, be your fey lover. Maybe there's quite a lot for the two of you to talk about. How does it feel to be the, the hero of an ancient tale? You sort that one out yet? I'm not feeling so heroic right now with my new uh, continents, but um, I did look pretty good, didn't I? In that coffin. Silver Fox, I'll say it again. <laughs> Beside, every hero needs uh, a few, some adversity to overcome. Of course, of course. It'll be all the better when I when I get back my, uh, my true continence. Um, but it's daunting to see yourself older. And after going through so much, I have no idea what he did. I feel... A little daunted, like, how am I going to live up to that guy? I don't know if anyone could find a millennia old story about themselves and feel like they could live up to it. Uh, I'm having a hard enough time uh, remembering the things that I do uh, in the future and remembering that that was me. And I've come straight from there to here. Um, how was your reunion with Thorn? Do you feel different now? I do. In some ways, he's the same as he was. Uh, quick with his word and his wit. Uh, I still believe he's good. And he said he'd, he'd wait for me. And he said that, well, he didn't make any fairy promises, but I have a feeling that if I call on him at a, at a needful time, he might be there for us. And I don't know how to feel about that. You freed him, true. He should be, if he's a fairy, he should be indebted to you for that gift. Mm, that is how it works with most of them, but it never was how it worked with him. He didn't play those rules on me when he could have. Um, well, I'm glad you're back and I'm glad you're here. And uh, um, Dr. C reaches out and uh, takes um, uh, Shanad's hand. 
And you can tell that Dr. C is a little freaked out at being a donkey headed person. <laughs> he's been joking about it, but now he's a little bit freaked out uh, between the loss of his apartment, the loss of his reputation, the loss of his life, and now the loss of his face. Um, uh, um, he, he hangs his head a little low. Um, well, and he doesn't really mean? understand the whole thing about the rings. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bear says, well, I'm glad to be here with you. Um, you must feel a little like bottom at the end of the play when he uh, wakes up in the glade, uh, thinking that he's just come up from some kind of dream. Um, Maybe that's what I need, a good nap. <laughs> a, a good nap put on by a, a, a fairy prince uh, <laughs> trying to cure you of your, uh, that might do it for you. Um, <laughs> I mean, you could always wander out into Central Park and see if there's any uh, any 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 harmless trickster fae that are willing to willing to switch you around. We might have to bother with all this ring business. <laughs> Not a bad idea. No one is going to recognize me walking around. They'll just think I'm in a costume. <laughs> well, if anyone knows dreams and surreality, I think it's you. You're probably the best equipped to be doing this. I mean, you've been talking people through it for decades, and now it's happening to you. It's just like a dream. Okay. I'm going to take a walk. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. You, C is inspired. <laughs> is Dr. C leaving alone, or is anyone going to go with him? I think Bear's like, all right, yeah, I'll walk. Wait. <laughs> oh, you're like heading at the door. All right. Um, and as they leave, Fadim, you get an email uh, from a .va uh, email address, the Vatican City extension, um, from uh, a person named Ignatius um, to the email address that you left with the Swiss guards. And he says, Thank you for your information. Would very much like to meet and discuss further. Suggest someplace public, maybe Grand Central Station at midday or convenient alternative. Uh, the Vatican will be in your debt for any assistance you can provide. Maeve. Maeve. Yes? Get your disguise on. We're going to Grand Central. All right, let's do this. All right. Uh, so, Dr. C, tell me about your approach to this. <laughs> You're going to wander and hope that a fae just uh, manifests to, to help you out? I think um, Dr. C, yeah, is going to um, uh, walk into, yeah, into Central Park. Um, and um, he's going to, he's read lots of stories about how to ride kind of the Synchronicity Express and, and like read omens. And he's going to try to um, just follow his nose um, and see if he can find a way um, uh, into, yeah, just put one step in, foot in front of the other and find the path that leads him to, um, uh, to who he needs to meet. All right. So I think it'll be a difficulty for uh, overcome action using law, which uh, Bear is welcome to, to help with. Okay. Let's see how the dice. I think Bear is humming low instead of a hymn. It's like a very traditional song that he would have learned from his grandmother that feels at home in the woods. My rolls are horrendous today, <laughs> a negative three. Well, um, let me say, uh, <laughs> failure to overcome includes success at a serious cost. Um, if you want, uh, I'll let you succeed and uh, there will be a serious cost involved in doing so, but you will find your way um, to someone who can help you with with your head 
Um, okay. I need advice here. Should I? <laughs> that was a negative three. <laughs> Should I re-roll um, if I can use a um, uh, an aspect? I would, because all you're looking for is a zero. Yeah. Negative three is, is negative two, maybe don't re-roll, but negative three and negative four always re-roll. <laughs> okay. I will see oh, if I can okay. use an aspect. Let's see. Um, I've got my big teddy bear with me, and he's inspired me. All right. I like that. <laughs> yeah, I'll be your uh, prince, Princess Titania, who's, who's <laughs> foolishly fallen in love with a donkey-headed <laughs> man. And we're looking for our Oberon. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh my. I got another negative three. That this is this is twisted. This is absolutely twisted. <laughs> All right. It's um well with with uh, with um uh the help it's a two and if I use my last fate point it would bring me to the uh to a tie. To a tie. Um although I don't know what I could use. Um uh Unless it's a strange twist of fate. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to use my treble in that way. Yeah, for sure. All right, I'll, I'll just go all in. Since the dice are not kind to me, I will have to use fate points, but that's me all in. All right. Um, so you succeed at a minor cost. So you, you find the path. Um, it's not easy, but you do. Um, you eventually see a, a mushroom circle and you sense that that's the spot where the veil between the worlds is thin. Uh, and the two of you step through. Um, we'll come back to you. Okay. Um, Fadim and Maeve, you just head to Grand Central at the appointed time to meet these uh, Swiss guards. Um, so uh, there is- I, I want Maeve essentially uh, at an advantage point, you know, in case something bad goes down. All right. Um, so the, there's two of them, the Malia, the female guard, uh, I'm just going to use their names because I feel very awkward if I say the male one and the female one all the time. Sure. Uh, Malia is, uh, dressed in, you know, nice contemporary clothes, um, Ignatius, uh, a bit more of a dork and also making sure you can recognize him is wearing a brightly colored hoodie in the sw traditional Swiss guard colors, um, and looks a little bit uncomfortable but you, you certainly can pick them out in the crowd uh, and they're looking around like they're looking for someone, you know, presumably looking for you. And I will head over to them. All right. Um, so as you approach, uh, Ignatius sort of sees you coming and says, uh, you're the one that we're here to meet. You have something to tell us? I told you most of what I knew from in that, that letter. Uh, so before we play out the conversation, Maeve, can I get you to make a stealth uh, stealth action? Sure, yeah. To see whether you successfully hide from them, uh, contested by their notice. <sighs> One. Uh, they are quite perceptive, so let's see how this goes. All right, that's a four. Um, they're going to succeed with style at that point. So they're getting, uh, they're spotting you and getting a boost to go with it. Um, do you want to use your, use any aspects here? Uh, sure. Yeah, I'll use my uh, turncoat changeling infiltrator. Mm -hmm. And uh, can I use what fools these mortals be just to like fool yeah. them to disguise? Yeah, nice. absolutely. Um, so the, yeah, so Fadim, you definitely get the sense that they're looking around, like they don't buy that you came here by yourself, but they don't seem to have spotted anyone. They say, like, who who are you? What's your involvement in all this? Why why was why were you at the gala with the, the connotation that you know you don't look like someone who would be that hanging out there? I I'm not going to say it outright, but I will allude to the idea that I am a friend 
slash escort, whatever, to one of the staff people that got me in. I wasn't supposed to be there. I do know this Maeve woman, she's another friend, because I assume they've talked to people and they already know that she was like interacting with the staff because that was how May kind of did her play in. So I kind of play up on that. And we were people watching and stuff. And we were in this room. And we, uh, you know, uh, she ended up kind of getting called out by these people. And I thought it was just like, okay, these, these FBI people are, are, are here doing something. But they said to that doctor that this was some sort of national security thing, that, that there was some sort of uh, like uh, uh, investigation and that they were here to, 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 to seize the book, which the doctor was like, what's, what is going, like, he clearly got caught up in something. And then, like, when he challenged them, like, they drew guns on him. Um, and, and that's when I got out of there. It was, I mean... I don't know what they're telling people, but but it was these FBI people who started this whole thing and were clearly trying to get people out of the way to to to, to like I mean, I don't even know if they were FBI. It might just pretending to be. I mean, why would they be stealing a a like 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 a a book? Um so uh, <laughs> that was very skillfully done. So you haven't lied to them, right? Like all of that was in fact true. Yes. Um, but there's a, a, a sort of misleading emphasis. Do you want to roll with rapport to see if they buy it? Sure. I, uh, let's, uh, let's roll with rapport here. Right. So that's a one. So I'm going to roll with Will for them to see uh, if they... Oh, it's a tie. I will. Uh, I, I, I hate to do it, but I'm going to. I, I think the enemy of my enemy is my friend. I, 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 I th Because this is really what I'm doing. I'm trying to get them like as another faction that is fixed, like going, what is going on here? This is not what we were told kind of thing. Does that seem okay? Yeah, I buy that. Okay, I'll spend that point. All right. Um, so instigating a diplomatic incident between the Vatican and the United States, amazing. Yes. Um, all right. So, okay. Um, well, I just want to go back quickly to Dr. C and Bear. Um, so you step through the veil um, you feel that you've sort of at least partially departed from our world, that you're in some sort of interzone that connects the, the, the worlds. Uh, and there is a, a woman who's sort of standing looking into some sort of lake or something like that, a little pond. Um, and she says, you know, it's funny. In the story, the queen of the fairies fell in love with the donkey headed man, but I am not at all in love with you, Dr. Sefuentes. And the fairy queen turns around and looks at you menacingly. <laughs> um, let's take our next break here. So we'll come back just about five minutes past the hour. What? And I didn't go by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Boy.
Cool. Um, everyone ready to continue? All right. So Maeve, from your like concealed position, um, as a changeling, someone with a bit of fey blood yourself, you just sense that something massive is going on uh, nearby, that, that a great power has like entered or come close to our world, that, that something is up. Um, what do you do? Uh, I text Fadim, uh, <clears throat> something's up. Uh, I'm going to go investigate. You're on your own. I, I do go in and and like look at my phone when it buzzes, like like a like a normal person does. And okay, I say, does that help? They'll say yes, but uh, who are you? What do you do? You're just some random innocent person caught up in all this. I find this. Hard no, to I'm I'm kind of trying to be like an MMA fighter, you know. Uh, it's that's kind of what I do so you know it's not really a steady gig but you know I mean you get that you must be trained in like combat and stuff like that so well, we mostly fight with halberds oh man that that must be wild because it but but you can't really use that in the ring so I play I play dumb jock with with them nice um so I think in that case they'll finally say like, well, all right, thank you very much for your help. We can yeah, punch. like like I, I do like keep I don't I don't want them to spot Maeve. I want to give Maeve plenty of time. So I do like like talk at them for a while about <laughs> MMA and stuff, and like until they do get irritated enough that they'll leave. Okay. Um, and so they you know they confirm that they can contact you on that email address. Thank you for your help, uh, and they. Uh, start to walk away they're going to try and follow you so why don't you go ahead and make a stealth check to see if you can well unless you want to lead them somewhere do you uh, try and stealth away or what do you do no i think i i think i lead them to because i established before that i was to go into gyms and places like that i think i i i i like lead them to a gym okay uh, uh, you know that's one of those sort of boxing places gym kind of things where, where a they'll stand out like sore thumbs and b uh they will they'll have to make a decision about how long they want to stay and watch me do you know squats or whatever uh-huh they are all right nice so Maeve you set off to try and like find out what's up you know where the others went generally but how what do you actually do or how will you actually go about trying to to find out what's happening uh, I'd like to follow the feeling of doom or dread if I can, and if not, I'll, I'll uh, try to rely on my my eye to see like I don't know traces of magic or something. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. Sure. Using using yeah. Make a notice check. Um. Using your fey eye. Uh, five. Nice. Um, so the the magical power that is like radiating across the city from this uh, you know this portal or whatever it is 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 unavoidable, unmistakable, um, and you are you're pretty easily able to to start following it, and we'll uh, get you to that scene reasonably quickly. Um, Doctor C and Bear, how do you react when you realise that this person is the Fairy Queen? <laughs> <laughs> immediately cross in hand uh, a peel a clear peel crystal of a of a bell rings out uh throughout the glade just to kind of like rebuff any first advance she might make like bears just going for all of his best charms so she just says the, the world's uh, our worlds have not yet intersected we can talk in this space but if it was possible for us to harm each other i would already have tortured you both beyond imagining you can put your your bell away my path has brought me here i've lost my life um 
I've lost my my face. I've surrendered to this quest. And what brings you into my path now? Are you a guardian? Are you an advisor? She laughs at that. <laughs> my only advice to you is to end your lives now before, before what comes. Uh, the last yeah. time that you, I mean, you banished me from your world. I had your descendants tortured and uh, mystified for a thousand years. Imagine what I'm going to do when I have my hands on you again. Well, then I guess you're of no consequence to me. If you can't help me on my path, I will continue walking it. You're just noise in the background, your majesty. And um, I think Dr. C is going to keep walking his path um, uh, and ignore her. <laughs> <laughs> and that could get into all sorts of trouble, but that is what he wants to do. He's like, fuck this shit. You know, you are a distraction. And so he's going to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I think he's I, headed towards the water somehow. Um, well, uh, after a few more steps, you will leave the glade um, where you met the queen uh, and you'll, I think, run into Maeve approaching uh, from the outside. And there, the queen will turn to you then, say, Shanad, um, it is easily within my power to reunite you with your love. Yeah, that one's been tried on me just the other day, actually. You are equally within my power to skin you. To give your skin to the Goblin King as his new plaything? Uh, then he'd have an awful nice coat, wouldn't he, if you did something like that? Have you met Listen, the Goblin King? It would not be a nice coat for long. He is filthy. Uh, we can throw words all we want. You know, uh, I won a, f a few trophies for such a thing in my time. Um, and we know what comes. You can't, you can't threaten us with uh, some uh, mystery knowledge of a future that shall yet come to pass and all the wicked things you could do because we were there. We saw them. Well, it doesn't have to only be threats. I, I could offer you things as well, you and your friends, your own kingdoms, the safety of your, your families. The, the thriving of your families. Mm. Kingdoms with spoiled rivers and salted fields and families that forget the names of their loved ones. Well, well, what would you like? I could let you keep one of your funny little continents. I would like my boyfriend to get his head back. And I walk, I keep walking after Alonso. So when you return to the world, you see that Dr. C's head has been restored. Uh, the queen, for whatever reason, has seen fit to do that. And the three of you are reunited just outside the, the, the veil between worlds. And Maeve, you, you sense that the, the opening is gone and that the, the worlds are separate once more. What what were you doing? What happened in there? Our path led us to the queen. Oh, and you left Bear alone with her? I can only walk my path through, fa through the fairy uh, realm. I, uh, Bear has to walk his own, but here he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And as uh, Dr. C gets up, uh, um, he looks different somehow uh maybe more gray in the hair like a lot of like a white streak a white streak through his hair now um that wasn't there before 
and um and a kind of a steeliness to him that wasn't there before um meeting her has uh because it's the first time this dr c meets her has transformed him and hardened him uh, uh, uh or um what's the right word when you when you uh when you Temper. take metal and you make it harder Temper. somehow what? Tempered, tempered, yes, th tempered, <laughs> um, tempered him, um, and and he's come to terms with um, leaving um, uh, his life behind, and wow. and he turns to bear and he goes straight up to him and lays a big one on on his lips, <laughs> like. It doesn't matter if you're in love with somebody else. I'm in love with you, uh, Bear, and I'm not playing games anymore. There's not enough time to play games. I'm only moving forward from now on. And let's keep walking. Uh, and I hand in your hand. Um. Oh, I should take my my donkey video off. <laughs> well, Shame. I mean that does seem like the shot that would end the episode if this was a TV <laughs> show. So I'm tempted to move to to adjusting the timeline track and leaving it there. I, I'm good. That's a brilliant end. <laughs> that's like that's great. Is everyone happy with that? Cool. All right. Well, you have resolved the event midsummer uh, midsummer night's dream so uh, let's adjust the timeline track for it the um so the and first oh sorry yeah i just want to make sure so we have the resistance track filled so does that get us another ripple it does okay so i'll go ahead and clear uh, that and add the ripple. yep uh, this is looking very promising for the resistance isn't it the um you you, I'm very impressed at how much better everyone's gotten at filling that track. The, um, okay, so the first thing that happens as we adjust the timeline is that you can rewrite the timeline aspect for the event. Um, I'm going to suggest, like, if, if you have an idea that's welcome, I'm going to suggest that we change the timeline aspect to forewarned is forearmed to reflect that you have this kind of prophetic volume that you can draw on. Everyone happy with that? Yeah. All right, I'm just going to do that quickly. Yeah, also, we've got a lot of mileage out of what fools these mortals be. Yes. <laughs> um, all right, and then we're going to change the future. So um, you can use a ripple to change a timeline catalyst either from minus to neutral or neutral to plus. Um, I think you have three ripples. So you have to put at least one of them on each of the two remaining events. And then the other one, it'll be up to you where you want to place it. Um, and the queen has one ripple to place. Um, I'm going to let you go first. Where do you want to put your ripples? Uh, you make the... Uh the owl's head devil a, a, a plus <laughs> yeah i didn't i didn't get to to say the word to the queen but like after my meeting with thorn and i uh i i like the idea of the way it goes different this time is there we if not are making friends we have learned how to deal with these people and we have learned how to <coughs> set them against each other in some small ways and we're just getting better understanding the nature of of what they want and and those sort of things so i would be i would be into uh, yeah. this one so the owl's head devil will become a positive that is yeah. an amazing change <laughs> I, I i would like to suggest and uh and then you all can put it where you want i think that we should put the last two on the rise of the fairy queen because I'm going to put one on both. And then I think the last one we should put on on that as well. I don't care where they go, but I think those those two should go there. Yeah, Sounds I mean, re me. really your overall goal is to to raise the the like average value of those pluses and minuses for the rise. So I, I think that does make sense. 
Um, yeah. Which specific, uh, I forget what these things are called, uh, items do you want to raise up? Uh, let's make, how about, how about at least make the crown not a threat and make it potentially, you know, if it, if we change it more, we might make it a positive. Sure. The queen is, is Sealy, right? Um, I, I guess that's a little unclear. Sealy and Unsealy are traditional names for different fey courts. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we don't know what that is. Until. I'm wondering if she's like uniting the courts by having the Sealy crown and being the Sealy queen or something. I don't know. Uh, but I, I do like the having that neutral and, that, and it being a mystery. Do you want to raise the foe or the place or the person? What do you think is the best other one to spend it on? I like yeah. the foe. What does anyone else think? I'm open. You said foe, so let's say foe. All right. And, and I, yeah, I like that it's not necessarily like friendship, but that that's, there's just a possibility for us to find success in um, in the foe may be their own worst enemy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, should should we rewrite what the foe is then to reflect that it's now something more positive for you? Uh, Queen marks it back down. <laughs> Uh, 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 well, I would suggest this. How about uh, the the foe there is the 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 greater host of the fae, and what we're doing is the idea that we are creating division and discord amongst those who serve the queen, because that's really what we've been doing, and as opposed to having sort of this united foe that we face against. Uh, that 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 foe is actually moving such that it may be a tool for us to use. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, what what would you call the foe now? Like just do, the divided fire forces. Actions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've already got a changeling and a shield maiden. All right. So I am going to seek any feedback that you have here because there are two rules or at least guidelines about how I place my ripple and they do not allow me to place it anywhere, but I still have to put it somewhere. So the, the reason that I say that is um, obviously like I change things from plus to neutral or from neutral to minus. So I can't change one that's already a minus, but I'm also told that I should avoid changing something back to the way it was before and the only things that aren't already minuses are things that you've just changed. So I, I would take the foe back down to zero that she's working against that. And that right. kind of makes it a, our goal to, to push that up. Does that seem all okay? Right. Yeah, I think that works well because you've still changed what the, the foe is exactly. So it's not like going back to quite how it was before. Um, but that, that works well, I think. Um, now let's see. Uh, that is... All right. Um, so you can also rewrite um, any of the either of the other items that you change, the catalyst. So you can rename the owl's head devil if you'd like to do that, or you can rename the unsealy crown. But uh, I like them both. Me too. Happy with them. All right. Well, I will stop the recording here, and then we can do a quick round of stars and wishes. <laughs>